Do you fancy living underwater? Well, you could do it here. Here is an underwater base in Minecraft, and I'm gonna give you a free world download in this absolutely incredible best Minecraft seed. Don't you go anywhere. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Minecraft build tutorial from me, Avamance, and today, we are going Subnautica. Well, not actually, it's Minecraft, but you know what I mean. We are gonna use this gorgeous inland sea as the site for a Minecraft underwater base. And this is where we're gonna build it. I've already prepped the area just a little bit so we got a clear floor and some decent space. So let's crack on. It's a really good idea to build a conduit. This is gonna make building a base underwater so much easier. I have made a video on how to get a conduit in Minecraft. The link is in the description below. It goes through each step you need to take to get the materials and how to build one. I am gonna be building this on the fly. However, the kind of palette that I'm gonna be using is right here. We're gonna have plenty of whites. We're gonna use warped woods to get that green effect, a little bit of the darker prismarine. And obviously this is a base. So we need lots of basey bits like workstations and storage. We are gonna start with a circle that is nine blocks across and apparently a shoal of fish as well and the first thing I'm gonna do is using quartz blocks is I'm gonna fill in this entire circle our circle is in place and now we want to build up some struts and to do that we're gonna use some more quartz blocks we're gonna place one at each corner of these long edges here and also one on the inside edge there we're gonna leave those two open this one open and this one open all the way around and we're gonna make these three high and in between these struts, we are gonna place glass blocks all the way along on every single outer edge that we have here. So you should have something that looks a little bit like that and then go all the way around, topping this circle off with more quartz blocks. Now I'm gonna bring out a couple of pods at least from this. So I'm gonna place three blocks there, three blocks there, three blocks there to create a three by three square. This is gonna be the transfer corridor from one major pod here to the other. On these sides of it, I'm just gonna put some upside down quartz stairs like that. And then I'm gonna run a glass there, there, and there, three high on both sides like this. And on the top, I'm going to place more stairs the right way up and then close that in with those quartz blocks like that so that is one corridor I'm gonna do the same on this side now we've got those connecting corridors on we can create the next pod these are gonna be square pods we're gonna go one one two three four on that side one two three four on that side giving us one two three four five six seven eight nine along this side we're gonna make this into a square so that's two three four five six seven eight, and nine Going to complete that square like that and a similar one over there we've got our nine by nine platforms there and i've just taken out the three blocks in the corner those three like that on all four corners on both of the platforms just to stop them looking too square then we're going to place a block there a block there and a block there and do that on all of the corners on both of the platforms we're going to place glass blocks between the quartz blocks that we've got here so it will look like that and we're now gonna raise this up another two blocks all the way around. Once they're raised up, we are gonna complete the circles again using solid blocks all the way around both of them. It's starting to come together. It does need a bit of color though. So for this larger pod, I'm gonna place some warped wood all the way around the outside of this circle. And what I want to do now is put a dome on top of this center module and it's a glass dome that I'm gonna use. So glass blocks all the way across. Now I'm gonna go through step by step on how to build this glass dome. However, if you wanna jump this bit, there is a timestamp in the description below because there are a few tools online like Plots Modeler that can show you how to do this if you don't wanna go through each step with me. First step, place a glass block on top of every single warped wood. The next step's pretty similar. We're coming seven along all the way here. We're gonna place a block there and a block there, but we don't place it on top of that glass block. We launch it off the side of that. We come all the way along here, place a block there. We don't place a block there. We launch it off the side of that. You can see we've got a slight indent and to do that on every side. Next level, we miss the end one and we come in at five. We then pop one there and place it on the side of that. So come along, miss the end one, not there and come all the way along, pop one there and make it sideways like that. We're then gonna place blocks on top of both of those and do that all the way around. Next layer, we come one, two, three, and then we place blocks along the side of that, miss that block and place one there. Come into the center here, one, two, three, miss that block, then place them there. We're then gonna place a block there, a block there. We need a temporary block to pop there because we need to place another glass block right there and take that one out and again do that one all the way around 
Next layer, place seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're missing the one just on the end. And then come to the middle of these three blocks here and pop one on that side and one on that side. Then gonna need another temporary block, put it there, place a block there and take rid of that. Then put a block there, another temporary block right there and place like that. And then go one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And continue that all the way around the outside. Our next layer comes in again, place a block there and a temporary block right there and then build up three across off of that temporary block. Take that temporary block out, place a block there and come in, a block there and come in. And then again, middle block, temporary block, one, two, three, one, two, three, take out the temporary block. Do that on the other two sides. Next layer is nice and easy. Go one, two, three, four, five. So you go over that gap, but you don't go to the end block. Put a block there and then another block there and then diagonally snake all the way across to here and then go one, two, three, four, five and repeat that process all the way around. We're starting to close the top of the dome now. So temporary block and one, two, three, four, five like that. And then on the side come in one, two and then overlap by one one two and then overlap by one you're then going to have a temporary block there and place a block right there then you're going to repeat that process temporary block there one two three four and five and then come in one two three one two and three repeat that all the way around we are very nearly there place a temporary block right there and then a block to the side of it so it's over that gap and then come in one two three four and then two, three, four like that. And then off the side, two off the end, one, two, and then three. So that covers over that corner. One, two, and then three. So it covers over that corner. You can then come all the way from this block. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Place your block there. So you don't need to waste yourself a temporary block. Place a block in that corner and then come across one, two, three. And just repeat that process. Come all the way across. Place your block there. Place a block in that corner and carry on. You should have a hole in your dome that looks like that. Now, all you need to do, one temporary block right there, place a block there, and literally fill in this dome hole all the way across like this. Don't overlap any blocks at all, just cover up the hole. And you should end up with the perfect glass Minecraft dome. I've decided that I'm gonna place another little module just here. So I'm gonna place one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just as before, I'm gonna create another corridor. But I'm gonna make this module slightly smaller. So I'm gonna hit one and then come out two, one, two. And I'm gonna miss out that corner, one, two, three, four, five. Nick out the corner, one, two, three, four, five. Miss out the corner, one, two, three, four, five. And fill this square in. And like on the other modules, I'm gonna bring up a wall three high on each corner with glass in between. And then trim it off with a row of quartz all the way around the top. I'm coming around the top of this pod with some more warped planks so as it matches up with the other side. However, we've got a very harsh edge right here. So I'm gonna place three steps there, three steps there, and three slabs there, which gives it a much softer feel. I'm gonna do the same around the top of both of these pods here as well. We need to have consistency in color across the entire base. So it should look like that. And then again, grab some stairs, place them there, there, there 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 and there and also there 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 and there grab your slabs and join them up so we've got continuous roof coming from that all the way around to that pod however we're not going to close this one up this is going to be a single height pod that's going to be a single height pod this one is not we're going to come around here with a little bit more quartz and then i'm going to raise it up one two three four one two three and four and bring it closed like that, fill that in with some glass like that, and I'm then gonna bring that up all the way to the top, and I'm gonna do that all the way around, which gives the base a much more interesting multi-layer feel. Then using quartz slab, I'm just gonna place a temporary one there. I'm gonna rim at the inside of all of these roofs, just one layer like this, and once we've got to the end there like that, I'm gonna grab some more glass, and we're gonna pull a glass ceiling into all of the pods, just to give, again, a more open feel so you can see the fish swimming above your head. And that is the very basic structure of our base complete. However, apart from that dome, it's really blocky and square, and we need to sort that out. 
So starting on the floor, you can see we've got some very sharp edges and corners there. Now the best way to soften them up is just to pop down some steps like that. I'm using some deep slate because again, it really works well with this warped wood, the deep slate color. It makes a great palette. I'm just going to pop that there. Get rid of you, Mr. Kelp. I'm ever so sorry. Pop that there as well. I'm just going to run around anywhere where we've got an extra block. So these ones here, that would work perfectly. We can put that out there. They're singles, so that won't work, but that would definitely work. And then coming around here, we can come one, two, three. I'm going to do that all the way around. We can also soften up the harsher edges on these pods by placing in a stair every other block like this. It breaks up that really strong line and gives a kind of crenellated edge. I quite like the effect of it. I'm going to put that on this pod and I'm also going to put it on this pod here as well. And of course, the second floor on this pod as well. Now we've got a very flat green plank running around the outside of the base of this dome and we've also got a bit of a colour imbalance with this deep slate and nothing up top. We need to address that so I'm going to put some deep slate slabs around the bottom of this dome. That breaks up that green plank, it also ensures that we've got a colour balance and it creates a not straight line going from the floor to the ceiling which is much more attractive. I'm going to do that all the way around. We can then add in some additional detail with these warped trap doors across the top. It kind of looks a little bit like wavy seaweed over there. It looks really, really nice. So I'm just going to pop one on that corner and there and flat that down. I'm going to go all the way around these pods like that, almost Atlantean feel. I'm then going to place some warped wood fence, not only in the tops of these corners here and here, but also in the bottom. So as we've got, again, additional structure, making it ever so slightly more turned and yet not overly shaped. I'm also placing more trap doors under and over these fence posts that I've put in, in the same colour in this warped wood, because it just gives a really nice additional shape. And I'm placing a lantern on each of these fence posts around the larger pod. It doesn't look quite right to have those trap doors on top of it, but I thought I'd just spread a little bit of light in there. And I'm just going to put a sea lantern into the centre block of all three of these skylights here, just to give a bit of light flowing down into the room below it. And I'm going to place another warped wood trap door on top of that, just to give it some extra shape. Now, at this point, you've got a number of choices as to where you're going to put the entrance to your underground base. Maybe you'd like to come up at it from under the ground. Or perhaps you could just use one of these pods as the entrance pod, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to use this face of this pod right here. We're just going to remove these glass blocks first before we do anything. And we're going to take out that step there. We're then going to bring out another level there, there and there. Take out those steps and then bring it out. We're then going to repeat that so as this comes out three from the original pod. We're then going to grab glass and coming one in, we're going to go one, two, three and make a horseshoe around that area, keeping that gap open. We're then going to get some deep slate stairs. We're going to go one, two, three with some deep slate stairs right there. We're going to come there and there on the sides of the deep slate, there and there just to continue that pattern of deep state slips that go all the way around. We're then going to grab some fence gates. We're going to put a fence gate there and a fence gate right on top of it like that. That you'll notice does not waterlog. You can't waterlog stairs but what you can do is open them and walk straight through to the inside of your base. What we can then do is place some upside down steps of quartz just there, some right way round steps of quartz just there like that we can then place in some trap doors there, 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 and that gives us a nice round entrance which is more in keeping with the rest of the design. We can then place steps on these edges here as well and we can continue off the roof in exactly the same way as we have done here. We need some slabs and we just bring slabs across all the way like that. We need to edge that off there. So again, we get our trap doors just as we did on the other side. One, two, three, and that brings a finish to that side. I decided to swap out those steps there and just continue that pattern with the trap doors and those fence posts because I think that looks better. 
And the final touch is placing them at the front as well and just putting some lanterns around there marking the entrance to your base. We're going to leave the outside now and going to walk inside the base. We've got a couple of things that we need to do in here for sure. Right now our entire base is waterlogged which is fine because we can breathe the result of that conduit out there. However it's going to make walking around and placing certain blocks very very tricky so we need to sort that out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the gaps between all of the pods. So get rid of those glass blocks there around here we need to get rid of these glass blocks also so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and then inside here we've also got more glass blocks that we need to remove like that we can now go from one side of the base all the way around to the other side of the base however we've got a very big domed area here we're going to put a floor around most of this there will be a mezzanine and then we also need to put a floor around this area too so as we can access both levels and i've achieved that again using the warped wood for that green effect i've taken the window out of this side and i've placed steps up along that wall which gives us access to this second level and I've decided that this level is going to be a balcony. So I'm going to go all the way around to the inner circle here, placing a block on the inside of each and every one. And I'm going to make that three, maybe four blocks wide. I'll see when I get there. I decided to come out four, which I think looks perfect. And now we need to drain the entirety of the inside of this building. Now there are two ways in which you can do this. The first one is by placing temporary blocks all the way along inside starting at the top and moving down to the bottom this takes a long time but it is a very viable way of doing it especially if you have not got enough sponges or any sponges because you've not taken on a guardian farm they're not easy to come by sponges so if you want to do this method that is absolutely fine you can see here we've already drained this top level you do obviously need to be aware that you are going to have water flowing in from other rooms because of these big old holes so you might want to segment out your building and by that i mean build up a wall and then continue to take out the water in exactly the same way until you get to the ground level the other way is to use sponges that you've got from an ocean monument and depending on how many sponges you've got will depend on how you do this you are going to need a furnace to dry out your sponges so get one of those ready along with some fuel and place in your sponges in areas around your base make sure that you place them in an area that isn't going to cause the blocks to update themselves and then flow back into themselves so i'm just going to do that one as well you can see i've only now got water flowing in from the outside i can then take out those two wet sponges and dry them in my furnace this entire room is now clear i can then come to this room and i can place a sponge there that is going to dry out this entire area sponges are incredibly effective at doing this you can see i've got a wall of water and we have now got an entire layer of water removed but it is still flooded in from the top so come into the top and do exactly the same as you did in the bottom level up here within the dome you are likely to find that you have water sources replenishing themselves because of other water source blocks next to them so bring on a row of your temporary block and along here place some sponges and that will remove those big chunks of water source blocks that you can then as a result take out even more water in one single sponge we are now completely drained and i have lit this place up temporarily with these lanterns just to make sure nothing does spawn on top of me now that this is dry that means any overland mob can spawn inside here that includes creepers which will put pay to your base pretty pretty sharpish and what's left now is decorating the inside the way you want your base. And that is literally up to you. I'm just going to do mine now and I'll be back when I've finished. Our base is finished, so let's have a quick look around. Walking in from the outside, we have got our bedroom because you don't want to have to run all the way through your base to get to your bed if all you want to do is sleep. Lots of storage and we've printed it up just a little bit as well. This is the Arboretum. It is the middle big old domey place and I've put a big custom tree right inside there. We've also got our armor, we've got our weapons, we've got some additional storage and we've also got our nether portal because we're going to want to go to the nether, right? We've got a little bit of croppage on the inside with potatoes and also carrots and inside here through our magic room we have got our wheat growing. The magic room itself has got a full enchanting setup and potion brewing as well as well as we've got some storage 
and anvils to be able to make necessaries. Up here we have got our crafting area, storage, pretty paintings, a little bit of lighting through end rods, which I thought would just be nice to look at, lots of furnaces and every crafting table you would need. Outside, I've made a coral reef and placed down seagrass and kelp to accent and frame the base. From here, you can see the beautifully lit interior with the big tree through the dome. Let me know what you think of the video and the base in the comments below. Don't forget to smack that like button and I will look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.